Hello everyone, this is Aaron McDonald, Technical Support Manager at Pangolin Laser Systems. In today's Pangolin tutorial video, we will be showing you how to use the Capture Polar Visualization software together with our Beyond Laser Control software. Capture Polar is a professional level visualization software that allows you to recreate your laser show setup and play this back to your clients without the need to actually set up the show in a live studio environment. In addition, Capture Polar is very easy to use and allows you to create a standard laser setup in very little time. In this tutorial, Lars, the creator of Capture Polar, will introduce you to the basics of using lasers inside their software, and then I'll show you how to set up Beyond to work with Capture Polar, and also how to visualize atmospheric, graphical, and laser mapping effects. To begin, I will turn it over to Lars at Capture Polar, who will introduce you to the basics of how to visualize a basic laser setup inside of the Capture Polar visualization software. Hi, I'm Lars from Capture Sweden, and this is a video that shows how you can use our design software Capture together with Pangolin's laser show design software Beyond. Capture is a 3D CAD software specialized for the design of stage lighting, laser and multimedia shows. It has been designed to be really user friendly and gives you a precise design environment where at the same time it's also easy to do any kinds of experiments. In the first part of this video I'll be showing you the capture side of things, while in the second part of it the Pangolin team will show you how to work with Beyond. Capture communicates with Beyond over the network or within the same computer. Since I've already got Beyond running in the background, you can see the laser feeds coming in in the media tab. In order to make use of it we will need to add a laser projector. This is done through the Library tab under the Media Fixtures branch. I will pick a Quant laser projector for the purpose and drag it into the first view. As you can see, clicking in the empty space deselects the laser and clicking on it selects it again. I can also navigate the view by using the green panoration and zoom buttons in the lower right corner of the view. At this point it's all wireframe 2D though, so I'm going to change the second view to be in perspective and live mode. As you can see we've already got a white beam of light coming out of the projector. And this is actually the test card, so I'm going to add a couple of objects to shoot on. I do this by dragging a few basic shapes from the library. You can find them under Objects and Forms. And I will start with a box that I drag and drop into the top view. I use the Properties shortcut under the red spanner button to get to the box's properties. Here I will change the width, height and depth of the box so that it forms a basic floor. It may be worth noting at this point that while my computer is set to metric units it's also perfectly okay to write dimensions in feet or inches here as well. Next I'll move the projector up above the floor and as you can see the test card becomes much clearer. Obviously we want to project what we've designed in Beyond and this is done by changing the media property of the projector to one of the laser feeds available. At this point I'll also show you where the view settings are located. Each view has got its own branch under the design tab alpha, beta and gamma views and they contain the settings like the atmosphere and ambient lighting level. What makes Capture so powerful is how easy it is to select and move anything around and how Capture visualizes the results of those changes. This way it's easy to try out projection angles and distances. By the way I'm using the right mouse button here to focus the projector while it's selected and the little red power button which reveals the built-in control pane where you can adjust the zoom and scale. 
Finally, I'm also going to import the model of the building, which I previously exported from SketchUp in the OBJ file format. Since I've already got the project open, I'm going to do this using the file extract function, in which I select the OBJ file I wish to import. This opens another window called the extract window, which contains a preview of what you have imported. In this window, select the items you wish to import and use the red arrow button to drag and drop them into your design. I'm going to increase the ambient lighting a bit so that it's easier to see what I have imported. And as you can see, this is how easy it is to simulate a projection on, in this case, the Houston City Hall. Now I will pass the helm over to my Francis Pangolin, who will tell you more about Beyond. Now that we have seen the basics of what Capture Polar can do with lasers, let's open up both Beyond and Capture Polar and set up a laser show scenario using gr atmospheric, graphic, and laser mapping effects. The first thing you will do is either create a virtual venue using previous Capture pr tutorials or open a virtual venue that you've already created. I'll be opening the project you saw in my introduction. It is a model of the Houston City Hall where I have placed five beam projectors and seven graphics projectors to display a multiple projection zone laser show. I have removed one of the graphics projectors so that I can show you how to add and set up a projector within the Capture Polar project. Now that you have your virtual venue, you want to select and place a virtual laser projector within that venue. This will basically recap what Lars showed you. First you will go over to the library tab in the lower right hand window. Go down to media fixtures and expand that list. Here you will find a list of laser manufacturers. Scroll down to you find your laser manufacturer. And you will open up a list of laser projectors. Select yours from the list and drag it onto one of the other three Capture Polar windows. I prefer to choose the top down view so that you can see roughly about where in the venue you're going to put it. And you can use one of your other windows to click and drag that where you need it. You grab the rotation tool right here. Rotate the unit around until it's projecting roughly in the area you want it. Now that we have our virtual projector within our virtual venue, we will open Beyond and set up a projection zone to accept that projector. The first thing we need to do in Beyond is to enable communication between Beyond and Capture Polar. Under the View drop-down, there is a choice for Enable Visualization via External Software. Choose it, and a pop-up will pop up, and you will click Yes to enable that visualization. Next, we will go into our Projection Zone settings, under the setting drop down, projection zones. Here we are setting up what projection zones will communicate with Capture Polar and giving them a fixture number so Capture Polar can route the output from Beyond's projection zone to the simulated fixture in the Capture Polar project. I'll be working with the, the guest projection zone. Make sure you highlight the, the zone you're working with. We're going to click on the Advanced tab. There is a place for External Visualization where you can assign the projection zone a fixture number. This is the number you will use in Capture Polar to match the virtual projector up with your true projection zone. I'm choosing 9.
Now we assign media input to the virtual projectors in Capture Polar. Here we are telling Capture Polar what simulated fixture to route the incoming beyond laser data to. If your fixture or laser projector is not already selected, select it. Down here in the right hand corner, under the Design tab, you will click Selected Items. What this is doing is bringing up the properties for any item that is selected. If we were to click on the middle projector and scroll down, you will see its media is set to Pangolin Virtual Laser 6. Notice on this projector, there is nothing set here. Double click in this area. You will find all the virtual uh, projectors that have been set up within Beyond that Capture Polar can see. As in Beyond, I am selecting 9. Now you are basically ready to view laser content in Capture Polar. Now that the laser is set up to accept Beyond output in Capture Polar, we need to make sure that the laser is only projecting where you want it to in that virtual venue. What we'll do is go inside of Beyond and make sure the zones you are working with geometric correction match what you are trying to set up in Capture Polar. Your settings. Projector settings. You want to make sure that all your laser projectors are set up to full output. If you have a laser controller that is not at full output, open the projector settings for it and grab two of the corners and drag them fully out so it says X size and Y size are at 100%. Under Settings, Projection Zone Settings, choose the zone you want to adjust the Geometric Correction Settings for and click on a test pattern for that zone. We are working with Guest. Click on the test pattern. If you want to come over and capture Polar to make sure output is being communicated. As you can see, there is some output. Under the Geometric Correction tab, you can choose various options. What I'm going to try first is Freeform Mesh. My goal is to actually get that square. right around the corners of that building. As you can see, we're fairly close here. One thing to think about if you've only got a single screen for a monitor, play with your window sizes a little bit and you can see everything you're going for. Now the geometric correction of beyond matches what I'm trying to project on and capture polar.
All right, now that we have our laser projector in Capture Polar, it is set up and beyond to accept laser output. And we can see that output in Capture Polar. We need to create some laser content in Beyond to be displayed in Capture Polar. Making atmospheric and graphic content is fairly self-explanatory. One thing I do want to show is how to make a graphic content trace an object. What we'll do here is make a basic square, right click on an empty queue, choose create new frames, depending on what kind of trace you want, you can either use the polygon tool or the square tool. I prefer to use the polygon tool because what the effect we're going to do is it takes the amount of points and draws a little bit of them at a time so that you get a small section of laser going around an object. The more points you have, the better the effect will look. Now you have a basic square. What you want to do is route that cue to the projection zone you set up. Right now it's going to main graphics. We want it to go to the guest zone. Now if I click on that, look over here, you see that there is a square basically tracing the outside of that building. Now that we have our generic test trace frame, the wind selected and beyond is showing in Capture Polar. I will show you two different ways to make a trace effect. The first way I'll show you is a write-in animation. Since there's two different ways, I want to copy this queue over to another queue so I can work with them independently. To do a write-in animation, you will right-click on the queue and go to Edit Frames. What we're going to do is we're going to make an animation based on this number right here. This will make 40 different frames in this animation. We click the effect and go to Write In. And what it has done, it, is, it has made 40 different frames, each with a little bit more of the frame drawn in. Click OK.
now you can see that that is tracing a line around our surface of our building. Now I'll show you the other way to make a trace effect. You click on my second cube, we're going to make an effect. Click on the effect tab, click add, this will be a key effect, using visible points. What this will be doing is telling the laser cube how many of the points within the cube or laser frame to be drawn at what time, based on this 0% to 100% timeline, which is also based on this time period. When you double click on the timeline, you're putting key points. I'm going to make three key points so that I can trace all the way over and all the way back. The first key point should have zero or just a little bit at the start. I find that three makes a good number to give you a, a decent line. The closer to zero you have, the closer to a, uh, a point you have. The key with this is to play, play with it as much as possible to see what gives you the best output that you're looking for. As you can see here, the it is going back and forth. I'm at a, a period of one, so it's doing it fairly quickly. I think a good, good demonstration is 10. As you can see, it's tracing it fairly well. Now that you've seen two ways to make a trace effect, I'm going to demonstrate a full pre-programmed timeline show that includes graphics and aerial effects outputted from beyond and displayed in Capture Polar. We'll stop our frame there. To get to the timeline editor, you will click the timeline button in the upper left hand corner of the beyond interface. As you can see, I already have a pre-programmed timeline show loaded onto the timeline. This show includes atmospheric effects, graphics, and the cues I made for the trace. For this demonstration I am muting the media file for this. One thing to note that these are different tracks and some of these tracks are going to one zone, some of them are going to multiple zones. This will be reflected in the Capture Polar demonstration. Click play on the Beyond user interface. Make sure you have Show It Now clicked. Click Capture Polar. And here's the output. Notice that I have one graphics projector in the middle, two graphics projectors on each side, and two trace projectors outside of those. The middle graphics projector is doing graphics and a trace, and we have five beam projectors. And this concludes today's Pangolin tutorial video on how to work with Beyond to communicate with Capture Polar visualization software. If you have any further questions, please do not hesitate to contact us at contact at pangolin.com. Thank you.